Welcome to Love and Worship. I'm your host, Greg Williams, and it's good to be back with you. I trust and hope that you had a great Thanksgiving, and just want to share with you that God is slowly but surely growing this ministry. I want to thank all those who are praying and supporting and commenting. Appreciate that. And we're getting ready to, we're kicking off actually, this is the first one in a series for Christmas. Uh, it's you, you guys know it's one of my favorite times of the year, so I'm not hiding anything. As you can tell by my tie, we'll probably get back to that later. This is actually the Charlie Brown Christmas tie. I've got a couple of them. But we're going we're gonna to begin with this. We're going to talk about Christmas memories. All of us have them. Some are pleasant, some not so much. Some of them bring laughter and others bring tears. But we want to look at those and figure out what's going on in our lives so that we can truly enjoy them and give God the glory. Let's begin, though, with the prophecy, the promise, and the purpose of Christmas. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9.6. You know, you, the prophecy and the promise have already come true. The purpose is continuing. Christ in the manger is when it came true. Christ in our hearts continues that. And we want to share that with others. Literally, Emmanuel means God with us. And you'll see that theme throughout this series because that is what Christmas really is. So, Christmas memories. Let me take you back down my Christmas memory lane, okay, for a little while. And it may invoke or provoke some memories for you. A couple of the most memorable Christmases in my life were what I remember back when I was seven years old. I'll give my I'll give my age away. You can figure it out. I won't tell you exactly. But in 1968, I was seven years old. We came bounding down the steps as we always had since we were old enough. I had a younger brother and a younger sister, five and three respectively. We came bounding down the steps. I think I jumped the last ten steps. Didn't even care if I went out the front door through the glass. I just wanted to get down there because that's how exciting it always was. We turned the corner and everything that we had been warned about came true. Let's just say we had not been the best behaved that, that season, all right? And my parents kept telling us that Santa Claus wants us to grow in Christ, okay? One way you can tie that together. And so we were likely not going to get the things we had desired. Sure enough, we turned that corner and the exuberance of two little boys and a little girl's face just went blank. Because underneath the tree, there were three little bundles of switches. I kid you not. Now, if you don't know what a switch is, your dad, you might even have gone out. I had to go out a couple times and cut my own so my dad could give me a little spanking with them. Never any kind of abuse, but he got my attention, okay? And when you got a bundle of switches from Santa Claus, right? They were laid under the tree. That's all you got because you had misbehaved, been disobedient, maybe even a little defiant. Okay? I know Santa Claus is going to come through anyway, right? Well, he didn't that morning. At least he didn't at that point. And then we turned around and looked at the stockings that were hanging over the fireplace on our mantle. And there was something in the bottom of them. We thought, well, maybe we got a little something there. We did. We reached down in each one of us and pulled out a bright, shiny, black lump of coal. I'm not kidding you. Seven years old. You can imagine what a seven and a five and a three-year-old were thinking at that moment, right? So our parents had a little, just a brief talk to us that we told you, you continue to misbehave and be disobedient, and this is what happens. So they asked us to go back up to our rooms. We went back up, and about 30 minutes later, that's, a, that's an eternity for a seven, five, and three-year-old, right? We, about 30 minutes later, they called and said, are you guys ready to come down yet? Breakfast is ready. So we came sauntering down the steps this time. We were not bounding. We were not jumping up and down. We didn't have bright smiles and pop out eyes bogging out of our heads. We came sauntering sadly down the stairs. And when we turned the corner and looked in that front room with the big gabled windows and the big live tree right there, this time it was full of packages and bows and ribbons. And right in the middle of that was the, probably the greatest Christmas present I ever remember was a big wheel. My brother and I, and my sister to some degree, but it was really ours, 
we got a big wheel. If you don't know what that is, because people don't play with those anymore, but that's this big, huge wheel in the front with two little wheels on the back. You sit almost down on the ground, just a few inches off, and you crank that thing like a tricycle. My brother and I wore that thick plastic out on that big wheel before the end of that summer. It was awesome. We went over and our stockings were filled and our parents reminded us that if that happened again, that they would not receive anything from Santa Claus. They would tell him to leave just the switches and the coal and that would be it. You don't think we enjoyed that Christmas? Oh yeah. Maybe even a little bit more as you can hear in my voice right now, 51 years later, right? But you don't think we also learned some lessons as a seven, five and three year old? Yeah, we sure did. Year after year, I have to say this though. No matter how difficult, Christmas was always special. It didn't matter what, how much we got or how little we got. Our parents always made it very special us, allowed us to enjoy the things of the home, of the church, of the community, and our little community there in Barrie, Kentucky. We were able to enjoy all the things, the Christmas caroling, the lights, the decorations, the Christmas pageant, or or our musical at church, maybe even a couple of other churches, all those things. It always made for great memories, even the difficult years. And there were difficult years, and I didn't realize it at the time, but now as a parent, I look back and realize how much my parents sacrificed for us to be able to have many of those wonderful memories for Christmas. And again, it wasn't all about the stuff. It was about the relationships. It was about the memories that were created together. I told you there was a couple of them. And I told you I was crazy about Christmas. Let me just interject here that I literally like to be the first one on my street, if not my neighborhood, to have Christmas lights up, okay? I don't always win. I know that's sad, but I can't help it. But even more sadly, I don't always win. I must admit that I think it was last year or year before, I got beat out by a Santa and a grandma got run over by a deer blow-up display. Okay? I love it anyway. I loved it. The lights start coming on. I walk around my neighborhood all through the Christmas season counting each night how many more lights are on houses. Okay, I'm, I'm obsessed, all right? Let's just admit it. But I'm really not just obsessed with Christmas. I'm obsessed with Christ. And it came home even more And the second one I'm going to talk, the memory I'm going to tell you about. And that was just uh, 24 years ago. Almost to the date. We went to the hospital. Let me, let me share this with you. My son was born, Lansing was born on December 21st, 1995. Now, I came home that day from basketball practice at the team I was with. The team had given us a brand new white rocking chair for the occasion of our first child. They put a big red ribbon on it, brought it out after practice. We had a half a day of school. Practice was over early. I bring the rocking chair home all excited because I know what it represented, that we were going to have a child. And I was going to be able to rock my child. Didn't know it was going to be a son at that time. But it's going to be able to rock my firstborn in that, in that chair. Here's the interesting part. I got home. My wife says, Amy says, it's not time yet. Not there. Within five minutes, I had fallen asleep on her pregnant lap. I was asleep for about two hours, and about 5.30, 6 o'clock, she wakes me up and says, it's time. Any of you that have children know what that means, right? So we had already packed things up. We put it in the car. I got her in the car, and we went down to Good Samaritan. It used to be Good Samaritan Hospital, which is actually where me, my brother, and my sister were born years ago. So we're there at the same place. We go in. We should have known from the very beginning this was not going to be easy. We thought it was going to be fine, but it was difficult. There were a lot of difficulties. I won't go into that. But here's what happened. When all was said and done, I'm sitting there that night next to my wife who's sound asleep for the first time in, in, in many nights holding our firstborn son. And I'm just giving God thanks for all that he's done for us and brought us through. And my wife had talked about, wow, he's going to come before Christmas. We're going to be able to have our first Christmas family together with our first child. He was born on the 21st. On the 22nd, the day we normally would have gone home, they said, well, we've got to keep him for a day. On the 23rd, they put him under the lights. If any of you know what that means, it means that he was jaundiced. He had an infection, and they needed to increase the bilirubins, whatever that is. That's what they told us. So he stayed under the lights from the 23rd to the 26th. 
actually the morning of the 27th. He had to stay for three full days and then a little sum. So what did we do? The seventh floor of Good Samaritan had been renovated to be kind of a hotel setting for parents and family of patients that had to stay. We go up and check in on the seventh floor. Guess how many are there? Two. Me and my wife. We spend the next three days walking down and looking through a glass window at our son underneath the lights. We didn't get to hold him. He didn't get to come out. You can imagine what that's like for me, but you can imagine even more what that's like for a mom who really wanted to hold her firstborn. So on Christmas Eve, the second day of this, I get this idea, I believe it's the Holy Spirit, not just my love of Christmas, but my love of Christ. I went around and asked the staff, there was only two or three, it was a diminished staff because of the holidays. I went around and asked them if we could take the decorations off the hallway and put them in our room. And they said yes. They were even going to give us their fake trees. By the way, I love live trees. This may be the only time I've ever put a fake tree up. But I brought in two fake trees, garlands, bulbs, everything, ornaments from off the hallway. Nobody else was there but us. They said, sure, take it all. And filled up this little hospital room with decorations. I called my family and I said, we've got two, at least two more days in here. And my wife is really struggling with this. Would you all bring the gifts and bring the food and bring the trimmings and come down here Christmas Eve? They came on Christmas Eve and we had a wonderful feast right there in that little room. And, and as sure as I'm tall at telling you this, we looked out the window, seventh floor overlooking downtown Lexington, and the snow was falling. About an inch of snow fell that night, through the night. It was unbelievable. It was like God saying, I'm still here. You get a white Christmas, you get the beauty of the scenery, your family's with you, and your son will be okay. They came back the next day and gathered with us again in that little room. We exchanged gifts. We all went down and spent an hour or more just watching our son under the lights. Couldn't hold him still. And finally, on the, on the morning of the 27th, we get to bring him home. That night, I'm sitting under our tree that I had decorated, live tree, that I had decorated in our new home, my wife said, this is not the fam first family Christmas I envisioned. I said, but God has made it a good one, as He always does if we'll let Him. And I'm sitting there, and as I'm holding my firstborn son, he's locked. The nurses told us this. He would lock in on things for minutes at a time, not just a few seconds, which no, most newborns don't do more than a few seconds. He was locked in on the twinkling lights of that tree, one of my favorite things that points to the light of Christ. And he was locked in on the lights on that tree. And I sat there and thought about the gift that God had given us in His firstborn son while I held a very similar gift in my own arms. Rocking him, him, rocking him in my brand new white rocking chair that my basketball team had just given us. It was a powerful moment. You see, God gives us memories. God gives us gifts because He started with the greatest gift. We're going to unpack that over the next couple of weeks in this series on what Christmas is really all about. Yes, it's memories. Yes, it's trees and Santa Claus and decorations and lights and music, all of those things. There seems to be a spirit about it. And believe me, there truly is a spirit because people stop and pause and think about the greatest gift ever given. They may not believe in Him, but even if they don't want to believe in Him, it's hard to avoid Him at this time of the year. And so we want to unpack that. We want to unpack a baby in a cattle's feed box. We want to unpack unpack God in the flesh. We want to unpack Emmanuel, God with us. Not just God with us, but God that became us. You see, because over the last couple of years, I have experienced, again, just like I did then, ups and downs. Two or three years ago, in the same season, I, I had to experience an 84-year-old 84 84-year-old 84 wife, mom, and grandmother pass away and a family that was grieving but celebrating a, a life well lived. During that same time, a 37-year-old young man, former player of mine, passed away suddenly, unexpectedly, leaving behind a wife and two children and a life that was snuffed out way too quickly. Well, how do you celebrate that? 
how do you have happy memories about that? Well, the point is, it's not necessarily about that. It's about what came to change all that. It's what came to give both that 84-year-old grandmother and that 37-year-old husband and father the hope of eternity. That's what it's about. It's about in the good and the bad, Christ and Christmas makes it all worthwhile as He can take any memory, blessing, pain, or loss and restore to us a fullness of life in His love, joy, and peace. That's Christmas. We can have it now and all year long because we have this prophecy and this promise that came true on the first Christmas. And He is still living this purpose out in our lives, of the lives of believers. And we need to share it with others. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Isaiah 9, 2, 6, and 7. And I need to add this. The zeal, the passion, the power of the Almighty God has accomplished this now. And we can live that out. Now, I promised you this. You'll find it in the article so you can go back and do it. I want to end on this. I'm going to have a top 10 Christmas list each time. So I'm going to do this quickly. But this is my all-time top 10 Christmas movies, okay? Let me know yours. Get on Facebook. Share with us. Go to, go to uh, loveandlordship at gmail.com and send yours in. Ask questions. Whatever you want to do. We'd love to address those. Here's my top ten. First one is A Christmas Carol, the one starring Alastair Sim, the 1951 version. You need to see that one if you haven't. It. It's a classic. The second one is the fairly new in 2006, Nativ The Nativity. It's an excellent one that really kind of brings to life Mary holding God in her arms, in a baby. The third one, A Charlie Brown Christmas. I told you I'd come back to my tie. I'm a little crazy, right, about the Christmas stuff. It's the, it's the one time throughout almost all the year now that network and cable television will play that classic and right in the middle of it they literally quote the Christmas story. Linus gets up on stage and says, for there were shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. Told them the story and said, unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I tear up when I see that and know how many millions of people and kids might be seeing that. Number three, Charlie Brown Christmas. Number four, Miracle on 34th Street. You can watch the 47 edition or the 94 edition. They're both awesome. Number five, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The cartoon version, okay? The animated 1966 version. Number seven, It's a Wonderful Life. I didn't see this until I was probably in my late 20s or early 30s, and I'm really sorry about it. If you haven't, take the time to watch that this Christmas holiday season. Number seven, a Christmas story. I have to put that one in for my wife. It's about Ralphie. Okay? She loves it because she grew up in that area. Number eight. The Sa Okay, I'm cheating a little here. There's actually three in this one. The Santa Claus, C-L-A-U-S-E, trilogy with Tim Allen. So many cute and wonderful things in that. It's fun. Enjoy it. Let it point your heart to the love and the grace and the beauty of Christmas and of Christ. Number nine. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Man, I can remember that being my favorite one when I was a kid. Go watch the 1964 animated version. It's so good. And then number 10, again, I love it. It's funny. It's, it's a little crude. I've got to admit that, okay? We're old enough to handle this. I don't like everything in it, but the Christmas Vacation. Okay, Clark W. Griswold, okay, Christmas Vacation. I see that one, and now I'm going to cheat a little more, number 11, because i got several friends that will probably shoot me if I don't include Elf. Okay, so there's my top 14, 15 actually, okay? Top 10 stretch to 15. I hope you enjoy them, and tell me what you think about them. You can even tell me why you disagree with me. That's fine, but just go enjoy it. And remember, if we allow it to, every bit of it points us to Christ, the Christ of Christmas. 
Check out loveandlordship.com for the related, related articles, videos, and podcasts. And be sure to, to subscribe to our weekly Love and Lordship newsletter. You can do it right there on the homepage when you come on the, on the website. You'll get more on these articles and events uh, uh, and, and resources that can help you in your walk with the Lord and with each other. Our prayer at Love and Lordship is that no matter what you faced in your life and related to Christmas or the holidays, that you will come to know the love, joy, peace, and life that is the Christ of Christmas. You see, Love and Lordship exists to point people to Christ as Savior and Lord and make that evident in their life and their relationships for His kingdom and glory. We're here to help you. If you feel like you're lost or have no one to turn to, Give us a call. Email us. We want to help you with your walk with the Lord and in your life so that you can understand what that means. Our conversations, our counseling, our mentoring that we provide, it's all free of charge. That we have people that support us, and if you do that, thank you very much. This is the end of the year, and we could sure use that. But we want to, we, I've told the Lord when I started this, wherever you open a door, wherever there's someone in need, if you open that door for me, I'll go and help them in the way you've given me the opportunity and the ability to do that. So that's what Love and Lordship exists of. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and make it a great Christmas season in Christ. God bless. We hope you've been encouraged, challenged, and blessed by today's message from Greg and Love and Lordship. Join us again next week as Greg shares more about the love and lordship of Jesus. 